Hello, I'm Joel Bartholomew. Some people call them health domains. Others call them modalities or service lines. These are the different tracks doctors take, usually in postgraduate training, in which they develop their practice specialty. One of the newer specialties is that of an intensivist. This is a physician who specializes in the care of treatment of patients in intensive care. If a hospital has an intensive care unit, or even an EICU, it must have 24-7 coverage to monitor the conditions of patients. Problem is, there aren't enough intensivists to go around. But by using connected health technology, a central hub can monitor a number of hospital ICUs remotely. We call this tele-ICU. The American Telemedicine Association has produced a series of guidelines for different specialties. Now, an ATA task force has generated a draft of proposed guidelines for tele-ICU operations to assist practitioners in pursuing a sound course of action. While they don't purport to establish legal standards, they are intended to improve the technical quality and reliability of connected health encounters. About 13% of the nation's adult ICU beds have tele-ICU coverage. Patients in intensive care units have the highest cost impact in any facility because of their needs for constant care. A new study by Marshall University researchers found that adopting connected health technologies for ICUs could cost as much as $100,000 per bed. But the investment would likely be offset by significant decreases in the length of stay in ICU, in patient mortality rates, and in total costs. The tele-ICU professional is usually a registered nurse who performs continuous rounding based on patient acuity, evaluates alerts for intervention, and assists the local team as requested or indicated. Commonly, a tele-ICU nurse must have a minimum of three to five years of recent critical care experience with specialty certification either required or preferred. Most hospitals don't have the resources to have an ICU physician on staff during the overnight hours. The draft guidelines state that a tele-ICU physician at a central location could monitor between 100 to 250 patients, depending on the program's design. This physician provides oversight and interventional services to critically ill patients. The equipment used to monitor patients remotely must be dependable. The guidelines place a lot of emphasis on connectivity, security, and compliance with FDA and HIPAA regulations. The draft will be available for review during a public comment period that ends on April the 26th. We have placed the link to the guidelines on this page, but please understand that they won't be there and they won't be available at this address at the end of the public comment period. I'd like to know what you think of the guidelines. Send me an email. My address is on the website and that address is Joel's blog at globalmed.com. I'm Joel Bartholomew.